A comet has exploded into brilliance near the sun, its icy heart ejecting a tail wider than five full moons, just as the sun hurls its strongest flare in months, launching a solar storm directly toward the spot in space where R2 Swan races closer to Earth. For days, NASA analysts watch as Swan's brightness jumps, amateur astronomers worldwide snapping images of its twisting tail, never knowing when the storm might strike. On October 21st, this cosmic visitor will make its closest pass, closer than any comet in years, under dark skies, with an interstellar object aligned on the far side of the sun. No one can say what the coming collision will look like or what it might mean for Earth. Are we about to witness a celestial showdown unlike anything in modern history? September 12th, 2025, Swan rounds the Sun at just half an astronomical unit, closer than Venus ever comes to Earth. At first, the numbers look quiet. Magnitude 7.4, a faint visitor, barely brushing the edge of binocular range. But comets are built for drama, and Swan carries centuries of frozen secrets beneath its crust. Solar heat now pours into fractures and pockets of volatile gas, trapped since the comet last crossed the inner solar system. The effect is sudden. Gases burst outward, dragging dust and ice into space. By September 26th, amateur astronomers in Chile and Australia report a brightness leap to magnitude 5.8, crossing the threshold for naked eye visibility under dark skies. Within hours, global forums fill with live photometry and animated time-lapse frames. The comet's core, once a muted haze, now glows with an intensity that hints at powerful forces inside. This isn't the slow fade of a spent comet, it's the signature of a nucleus under stress. Outbursts like this are rare but unmistakable, evidence that Swan's surface is fractured, venting fresh material in a burst of energy. The coma swells, enveloping the core in a cloud of vapor and dust, while jets carve faint lines outward, tracing the escape of gas from deep within. For observers watching night to night, the changes are unmistakable. A single evening brings a new twist in the tail, a brightening in the core, or the sudden appearance of a jet. The comet's internal machinery, you see, rock and bike and trapped gas, responds to the sun's relentless glare with a display that is both violent and beautiful. Swan is no longer just another faint wanderer. It has become a living laboratory, its outburst offering a glimpse into the hidden workings of a primordial world. The question now, how will this surge of energy shape the comet's sprawling tail as it races outward? A tail stretching more than two and a half degrees across the sky, five full moons laid end to end. For sky watchers, that scale transforms the experience. Swan is no longer a distant blur, but a living structure. Binoculars reveal a streak that dominates the night, broad and layered, with the faint electric blue of the ion tail diverging from the golden dust. Every evening brings new detail. Jets spiral outward from the coma, twisting as they meet the solar wind. Kinks ripple down the tail, sometimes vanishing in hours, sometimes leaving behind knots of dust that drift apart. Across continents, amateur astronomers become a global network, stacking images, trading time-lapse sequences, and mapping changes frame by frame. Reports from Argentina, South Africa, and Australia fill online forums. One observer catches a sudden branching, another records a plume curling away from the main tail. In South America, a student team logs a faint condensation drifting along the ion stream, its motion tracked against background stars. Professional observatories join in, but the story belongs to everyone with a lens and a clear sky. Each new image adds to a growing archive, showing how Swan's tail responds to the changing solar environment. The dust tail, broad and slow to fade, marks the path of heavier grains, while the ion tail, narrow and restless, reveals the invisible dance of charged particles with the sun's magnetic field. This is a comet on display, its secrets written in shifting light. 
Night after night, the world watches as Swan's tale unfurls, an evolving record of cosmic forces at work, and a reminder that discovery is a shared pursuit, open to anyone willing to look up. On September 28th, at 0843 Coordinated Universal Time, the Sun detonates with an M6.4 class flare, its X-ray flux surging past the quiet plateau of the previous weeks. In a matter of minutes, Active Region 4232 transforms from a tangled nest of sunspots into the launch pad for a solar storm. Magnetograms reveal twisted fields, black and white lines wound tight like springs, now snapping with explosive force. The flare's light races across the solar system at the speed of photons, but the main act is still to come. A coronal mass ejection, a billowing wave of charged plasma, bursts outward at nearly a thousand kilometers per second. Inside observatories and space weather centers, the spike triggers an instant response. Solar telescopes pivot to lock on to the event. Coronagraphs capture the expanding halo, a bright arc swelling across 90 degrees of solar longitude, dwarfing the scale of most recent eruptions. For reference, the leading edge of the CME is moving fast enough to cross the distance from the Sun to Earth in just over two days. Analysts overlay the blast's trajectory onto live comet tracking maps. The numbers line up. This CME is not headed for Earth, but for the same sector of space where Swan now drifts, its tail already stretched thin by the solar wind. The raw power on display is staggering. The Sun, a star of steady light to the naked eye, reveals its true nature as a dynamic, sometimes violent engine. Superheated plasma, millions of degrees, threads of magnetic energy snapping and reconnecting, all unleashed in a matter of seconds. For the comet, the implications are immediate. Its fragile ion tail, hundreds of thousands of kilometers long, now stands in the path of a solar shockwave. The question is not just how bright Swan will get, but how it will withstand the sun's fury as the CME barrels toward its coordinates. Solar physicists and comet watchers alike brace for the next act, knowing that in space, even a distant eruption can rewrite the script in an instant. Inside NASA's space weather operations, the countdown begins as soon as the CME's trajectory is confirmed. Analysts pivot to Enlil propagation models feeding in real-time solar wind data and the latest coordinates for SWAN. Each simulation run refines the clock, 800 to 1,000 kilometers per second. The coronal mass ejection barrels outward, its shock front expanding across a 90-degree arc. The question isn't if it will cross SWAN's path, but when and with what force. By midday on September 28th, the first predictions land. The CME is not Earth-directed, but its leading edge is lined up almost perfectly with the slice of space SWAN now occupies. The models spit out a window, 48 to 72 hours until impact. That puts the earliest arrival as soon as the night of September 30th with the possibility of lingering effects into October 2nd. Uncertainty bands widen with every hour, a reminder that even with the best physics, the solar wind is a restless, shifting sea. Attention shifts to the CME's embedded magnetic field. Its orientation will decide the outcome. If the field points southward, the ingredients are set for magnetic reconnection, a process that can sever a comet's ion tail in minutes. NASA's heliophysics teams debate the latest magnetogram data, searching for clues in the tangled lines erupting from active region 43-2. Meanwhile, simulation teams run parallel scenarios one where the CME's magnetic structure glances off Swan, leaving only a ripple in the tail, another where the field aligns for a direct hit, promising a dramatic tail disconnection event. The clock is pinned. The world's telescopes are now on standby. In the next 48 hours, a cosmic collision course will play out in full view, its outcome written in the shifting light of Swan's tail. If the own the coronal mass ejection's magnetic field arrives with a southward tilt. The stage is set for one of the most dramatic phenomena in cometary physics, magnetic reconnection. In the language of plasma science, this is when oppositely directed magnetic fields snap together, break, and rejoin, 
releasing energy and severing the delicate link between the comet's ion tail and the solar wind. The process is sudden. Models and past events, like the famous Enke disconnection in 2007, show that a tail can be sliced away in less than 15 minutes. For Swan, the risk is real. Its ion tail, a filament of charged gas stretching hundreds of thousands of kilometers, is tethered directly to the sun's magnetic field lines. When a CME's embedded field sweeps through, the polarity determines everything. A northward field might pass harmlessly, but a southward one acts like a cosmic guillotine. Plasma physicists watch for the telltale signs, a sharp kink, a glowing fragment drifting free, or the sudden collapse of the tail's leading edge. NASA's teams run scenario after scenario, adjusting the CME's orientation by a fraction of a degree, calculating how a shift in the interplanetary field could mean the difference between a minor ripple and a full-scale disconnection. The clock is ticking. With every hour, the probability of witnessing a live magnetic reconnection grows. For the scientific community, it's a rare chance to observe the solar system's invisible forces at work. Not in distant theory, but in real time, written in the changing light of Swan's tail. A comet's ion tail is a fragile thread, bound to the solar wind by invisible lines of magnetism. When a coronal mass ejection barrels through, the result can be a spectacle written across the sky. Veteran observers know the signs. In minutes, the tail may kink, break, or even vanish from the field of view. Detached fragments, glowing knots of gas, can drift away, trailing behind like cosmic breadcrumbs. Sometimes a fresh tail springs up almost immediately, tracing a new path through the solar wind. For sky watchers, this is the moment to keep cameras rolling and telescopes trained. Past events, like the 2007 Enki disconnection, unfolded in less than a quarter of an hour. A sudden, silent drama. With Swan, anticipation runs high. Forums buzz with predictions. Will the tail snap in a clean arc or unravel in a tangle of filaments? Could a new tail form within hours, brighter or more twisted than before? Every observer becomes a witness to real-time physics. A single frame might capture a drifting condensation, a sudden gap, or the first hint of a renewed ion stream. The world's telescopes, from backyard setups to major observatories, are poised for the moment when the sun's storm meets the comet's delicate machinery. This is not just astronomy, it's a live experiment open to anyone who looks up and records the sky. The potential for discovery is as wide as the tale itself, and the next few nights promise a show that could rewrite the textbooks on solar comet encounters. October 21st, 2025. The date is circled on calendars from Buenos Aires to Perth. On this night, Comet Swan sweeps past Earth at just 0.25 astronomical units, about 39 million kilometers a hundred times farther than the moon, but close enough for its presence to reshape the sky. The timing is near perfect. A new moon guarantees the darkest possible backdrop, letting Swan's tail unfurl across the heavens without interference. In the Southern Hemisphere, the show begins right after sunset. From Argentina, South Africa, and Australia, the comet hangs low in the west, a diffuse beacon with a tail that easily fills the view of standard binoculars. The naked eye picks out a soft glow, but through glass, the structure comes alive. Jets, knots, and shifting rays, all evolving as Earth spins beneath the display. Northern Hemisphere observers will need patience. Early in October, Swan sits low, flirting with the horizon but each night it climbs higher, offering better views as the month wanes. For those with a telescope, the details multiply. The tail's edge sharpens. Subtle color gradients reveal dust and ions streaming away, and the coma pulses with the energy of a world in upheaval. On this same night, a second wanderer, 
interstellar comet I Atlas, appears on the opposite side of the Sun. The odds of such a cosmic alignment are vanishingly small. A bright near Sun comet and a visitor from another star system, both visible in the same night. For sky watchers, it's an invitation to witness a double act that spans the solar system. Even more, Swan's proximity allows for a rare experiment. With careful timing, observers separated by oceans can measure its position against background stars and detect a subtle parallax shift, a demonstration of cosmic scale written in real time. The sky becomes both theater and laboratory, and for one night, the universe feels just a little closer. Across continents, the night sky becomes a laboratory. School clubs in Texas and Cape Town, seasoned comet hunters in Australia, and professional observatories from Hawaii to Chile all join the same experiment. A comet this close allows for something rare, parallax mapping. By timing Swan's position against background stars from different longitudes, teams can measure its distance directly, a cosmic triangulation that once required the world's largest telescopes now possible with a digital camera and a clear horizon. Student groups upload their results in real time, logs ticking in from New Zealand, Argentina, and Colorado. Each data point sharpens the map, narrowing uncertainties that satellites alone can't resolve. Online, citizen science platforms light up with fresh images and photometry. Forums track every flicker in brightness, every kink or ripple in the tail, building a record that no single observatory could match. The effort is collaborative and immediate. One observer's time lapse reveals a faint condensation drifting along the ion tail. Another's spectrum hints at fresh molecules released by solar heating. Within hours, these findings circulate among professional researchers, shaping how models are tested and refined. Debate simmers over the timing of Swan's outburst and the solar flare. The sequence is striking, but the numbers tell a different story. No proven link just a cosmic coincidence. For now, the value lies in the uncertainty. Every image, every measurement, becomes a piece of a puzzle still unfolding. In this shared pursuit, discovery is not reserved for the few. Anyone with curiosity and a lens can help write the next chapter of the comet's journey. On October 21st, 2025, Comet R2-Swan will pass just 0.25 astronomical units from Earth about 39 million kilometers, while its tail stretches more than twice the width of a full moon. Verified reports confirm Swan's dramatic outburst and rapid tail expansion after rounding the sun, with amateur astronomers worldwide documenting changes night after night. NASA's data show that the sun's M6.4 class flare on September 28th launched a coronal mass ejection directly into Swan's path creating a rare chance to observe how solar storms interact with comet tails in real time. Yet the connection between Swan's outburst and the solar flare remains unproven, and questions about how the CME will affect Swan's structure are still open. For scientists and citizens alike, this event offers unique opportunities to study our dynamic solar system as it unfolds. What happens next will be recorded not just by space agencies, but by thousands of observers around the globe, contributing to a living archive of cosmic discoveries.